The reason 90% of composers fail is because they give up too soon. In this video, I've got five tips for you to help make sure that you persevere and achieve the goals that matter most to you. I like to think of being a creative person and pursuing creative goals as playing snakes and ladders. It all feels like we start off on the same square. Somebody rolls a six, lands on a ladder and just shoots up to another level completely. And you're there rolling ones and twos, feeling like you're never getting anywhere because all you're seeing is other people climbing these ladders. And you think, well, how come they've reached the top level already and I'm only on the, the second of 12 levels? This sucks. This is really hard, and it is hard. But just like in stakes and ladders, people do get to the top at different rates. Some people fall back down, some people rocket to the top, other people just steadily plod along all the way to the top. So when I started out, I was among many other musicians who were hoping to, air quotes, make it big time in the music industry in whatever format that was, whether you were in a band, whether you were a performer, whether you were a composer, producer, whatever. Over the years, which is you know approaching 15 years, I have seen many, many composers fall by the wayside for the simple fact that they gave up too soon. And I'm going to be totally honest with you, over that period of time, I have wanted to give up quite a few times because, let's face it, it's really hard. You face constant failures and criticism and honestly it's quite lonely being a composer you're often doing it on your own I wanted to give you guys five tips that would really help lift you and keep you persevering these things have helped keep my spirits up and keep me focused on achieving the things that matter to me number one is to be in it for the process not for the outcome now there's so much going on about goals that often we forget that we need to enjoy the process. You become a success in a creative industry. You have to remember what it is you're going to be successful at. Are you going to be a successful writer, a successful composer, a successful actor? Whatever it is, either way, you're going to be doing that thing, doing the process of writing, acting, composing. That is what you will be doing now and then. So that is the reason you are here. And always to remember that, be in it for the process and to make sure that you keep doing that thing. It's all too easy to get swamped with other work so you suddenly forget that, oh wait a second, I am actually a composer. I shouldn't, I'm not just a person replying to emails. I'm supposed to be writing music and that's the thing I love doing. That's the thing I want to be doing now and then. And that is going to hold you steady throughout all of the twists and turns of being a composer. Number two, Treat each failure as one more step towards your goal. It's so often the analogy for failure is a door closing in your face. And I really like the saying, you know, when God closes a door, he opens a window, or she opens a window. The thing is, I like that because it kind of, it takes the idea of it being an obstacle out of the way. But I want to take it that one step further. And one step is one failure. It's one learning curve. It's one point that you've gone one step closer to what it is you want to achieve. You've emailed a publisher and they've emailed back saying, this is great, but it's not right for us. One step closer. You often hear about all these writers like JK Rowling, for instance, who got turned down countless, countless times. And if someone could show you how many emails it takes for you to get in with a publisher, then you'd say, oh, wait a second. It only takes me 12 emails and I've sent four already. So I just need to send a few more and then I'm there. But because we can't see that, we have to remind ourselves that each of these failures is one step closer to what we actually want. Number three, keep a feel-good file. Now I have one of these. Uh, it's messages and emails and things that I have received from students of mine. And I keep it so that when I feel low or down about my work or where everything is going in my business, I read them and remind myself, that's the reason I'm here. I want to be of service to other people. And reading messages from other people that are positive and are grateful and are just lovely, it just completely lifts your mood. And that is what we're here for. You want to lift that mood so you can refocus and get going on the process of what it is you're doing. Number four, do other stuff. Now, I didn't want to say, like, make sure you've got a work-life balance. Because actually, when you work at home, 
doing a job that you absolutely love, like writing music, it doesn't often feel like work. So, I mean, it still feels like fun. So the idea of work and fun got mished and mashed together in my life quite a long time ago. And I found that really difficult. I couldn't decide whether I was playing for fun or whether I was working for money. And, I, and it became very confusing. And the trick to it is have other things going on in your life. It sounds like an obvious one, but having friends that you see, having a family that you love and spend time with, having TV shows that you look forward to, having books that you read, exercising, meditating, having holidays, taking time away. Now, the reason I'm suggesting this, obviously, is because it's good for you. Because when you get to a point, say, where somebody has rejected you in some way, or, you know, said they don't want your work, or you didn't win a custom, or you didn't land a job, because you have other things going on in your life, it doesn't feel as bad. The times in my work when I have been just 100% work and I've not won a custom job, it felt like such a tremendous blow. But the times when I was doing other projects and having other things in my life, I was like, oh, oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, just one thing. Number five, trust your gut. We are blessed with intuition, whether that's creative intuition or a higher purpose intuition or whether they're the same thing. I don't know. That's another video altogether. We don't trust our gut enough and we haven't been listening to that quiet whisper where that says, this isn't right for us. This isn't right for you. You don't want to be doing this. You know, I chased custom for a while in trailer music because it seemed like the cool job. Oh, those guys doing custom, they win the big trailers. I found myself getting more and more down and beaten up about it and I because I wasn't listening to the voice inside that was saying this isn't right this isn't what you want to be doing and your gut might even be saying to you you don't want to do this full time and that's not a bad thing I don't want to write music full time I, I don't that's why I have YouTube channels and my website and my newsletter I if you head on over to my website, richardprim.com, you can sign up there. It's where I share my ideas and thoughts and tips and videos and things all about helping you, my fellow composers, live more creative and content lives. I, I want to be doing other creative things. I want to be being of service to you guys. It's because what's the good of all this success if we're not content? Playing Snakes and Ladders is just like being a creative person professionally. Just keep rolling the dice. Just keep playing the game and have fun doing it.